participants at remote centers and in the studio. So this is a topic uh, uh, which I have given today, challenges to automotive industry. So I will be covering uh, the developments which have happened on in Indian automotive cars in uh, recent uh, two, three years, and also some vehicle which are going to be launched in very coming uh, soon, you can say. So mostly uh, it will be related to the how the performance of the vehicles have been improved, the safety features, and little bit on the emission part also, because emission in detail will be taken by uh, two, three speakers, maybe day after tomorrow and uh, next day. So emission I will be covering in a very limited way. So let's start. So uh, what are the challenges being faced by various car manufacturers? Maybe 20 years back only the, you can say the uh, drivability or the, to some extent fuel consumption were the only two topics which were a challenge to car manufacturers. Now these days, the major top five uh, challenges to a, any car manufacturer or automobile manufacturers are the fuel efficiency of the vehicle, performance of the vehicle, which covers the drivability. Then the most important uh, and uh, the hot topic, uh, at least for uh, cities like Delhi or the most polluted cities, the cleaner emission. Then the liking of the customer on the aesthetics and the outlook, that's the styling, styling of a car. And then the safety and drive comfort. So these are the five challenges which every car manufacturers to be a competitive in this field has to take lead or at par with the other uh, other manufacturer to have a place in this very competitive field so first we take the fuel efficiency now fuel efficiency of a uh, vehicle in today's scenario it can be uh, it can be uh, competitively compared in three ways. One is the fuel consumption in city driving and highways. Secondly, the figures, uh, the fuel consumption figure, which we drive out when the vehicle is tested for emission compliance test at ARAI or the other competitive uh, testing agencies like I ICAT. So there we also drive a fuel consumption figure. So that is also being quoted by various manufacturers as a uh, benchmark that their vehicle has a better fuel consumption. Then very soon, maybe this year or next year, the star leveling based on fuel consumption will also start, uh, which will be a sticker put on any uh, car or SUV, uh, which will be uh, indicating the fuel consumption this vehicle will deliver. Now the fuel consumption in city driving and highways, we, all the manufacturers, they, they, they give figures that what will be the fuel consumption of their vehicle in city driving, highway, and also a generic figure, the, you can say the average out overall figure. So these figures are given usually in kilometer per uh, liter. And in some uh, countries like USA, they, they also uh, give a figure that how, how many for a, or a for a gallon, how many kilometers or miles per gallon figures are also there. Now we are comparing here, like for fuel efficiency, two cars on the left is the Honda city on the right is a Hyundai Verna car. So the town driving figure, the highway and the overall fuel consumption figures of a Honda city are much better as compared to a Hyundai Verna vehicle. Uh, in all the three town driving highway and overall also and this also reflects the uh, you can say the feedback what, what we get, get from the customers also so the, this is one way of specifying the fuel consumption then also uh, some of the uh, companies claim the ARI fuel consumption figure now this ARI fuel consumption figure 
this is coming out when the vehicle is tested on a chassis dynamometer for certification of the uh, emission in in the certified labs of ARI Pune or IKET Manesar. So uh, when the cycle is completed from the carbon uh, balance method, the fuel consumption figure is also derived out and it's released along with the emission test report. So this figure, like uh, uh, this Amaze vehicle is claiming 25.8 kmpl for their diesel vehicle and trans translating it into like if we, uh, the vehicle is driven from Chandigarh to Delhi, it will cost only rupees 450. Similarly, from Delhi to Jaipur, rupees 486. Of course, these uh, figures were derived out maybe one and a half year back when the diesel price was maybe some 20% uh, lower from current value. So the uh, the ARI figure is another figure which the com competitors challenge each, each other. So they have to improve this figure also. And in this uh, slide, the, the table gi is giving the fuel consumption, the ARI fuel consumption figure, which has been derived on emission test cycle for some of the top selling models. So just uh, like a Honda diesel, which was launched in 2014, they claim a, a fuel consumption figure of 26 kmpl. So this vehicle was the best uh, as far as ARI fuel consumption figure was concerned. And of course, after 2014-2015, uh, uh, the Maruti, Maruti Suzuki Seaz came and it was even claiming up to 28 kmpl. So, just a list of the fuel consumption figure. And some of the like Alto K10 is a petrol vehicle. So, the fuel efficiency is a bit uh, poorer as compared to diesel vehicles. Now, the third, uh, third parameter for evaluating the fuel consumption, which is going to be implemented uh, this year or next year, that, that relates to the CAFE standards and star labeling based on fuel consumption. Now, the just uh, on the lines that we have a electric energy consumption uh, uh, labels on our electrical equipment like refrigerator or air conditioner we buy, there is three star, four star, five star, indicating the power consumption, the kilowatt hour power, power consumption. Similarly, a star la label, which can be understood by a layman, will be put on the cars and SUVs, which, which, which can give a very uh, direct indication of the fuel consumption the company will be claiming. And it will be authenticated figure because the other figure they are not listed or available available with the uh, dealer or the customer so this star label will be very able to uh, very easy to understood by the customer so how this star labeling has been proceeded that benchmarking data has been collected beginning from 2010 the various the various car manufactured by various manufacturer the fuel consumption figure was uh, measured on these cars by running the vehicle for 100 kilometers and the liters consumed was uh, measured. So based upon the 2010 fuel consumption figures, targets were set for 2000-2018 that we need to improve from the 16.42 kmpl figure of 2010 to 18.2 kmpl figure in 2017-2018. Further, this, this figure will improve to 22 kmpl in 2022 from five, uh, five years from now. And the corresponding fuel consumption figures, uh, the corresponding CO2 figures equivalent to the fuel consumption figure, they are also given that the CO2 value will also improve from 129.8 gram per kilometer to 110 gram per kilometer in 2022. Now, this CAFE standards and star labeling, they are to be handled by two different agencies. The CAFE standards, 
will be handled by ARI and Ministry of Surface Transport and the star labeling will be handled by BEE which is currently handling the electrical appliances star labeling also. Now star labeling based on fuel consumption since the heavier vehicles have a different fuel consumption as compared to lighter vehicles. So various categories uh, have been made based upon the weight of the vehicle. Like there will be category up to 600, then up to 800, then 800 to 1000, then 1200. So these categorization of vehicles based upon the vehicle weight has been done and the fuel consumption will be calculated and target will be uh, fixed based upon the weight category. So this can be called a curve weight of the vehicle or the reference mass of the vehicle. So based upon this category, various fuel consumption figures which have been based upon 2010 data will be derived out. Now, uh, since we are talking of 2009-2010 data, so depending upon the curve weight of the vehicle, the fuel consumption, how many liters for running a vehicle for 100 kilometer, a graph of uh, these two was plotted and a average line was uh, derived out which which comes to be that fuel consumption is equal to uh, 0 0.0071 into weight category minus 0 0.725 so this is the straight line uh, that was derived out in 2009-2010 And based upon this 2009-2010 uh, this line, further reduction in fuel consumption that was planned in 2015-16, that uh, this green line shows that, and uh, further below the 2020-21 uh, targeted or the limit value of fuel consumption was fixed to be uh, met in coming future. So the equations for uh, the, these targets were like C is equal to and the equivalent CO2 figures because fuel consumption and CO2 are directly related. The equivalent CO2 equation is given here. C is equal to 0 0.06 into W plus 76. This is for 2017-18. Originally, this was uh, supposed to be implemented in 2015, but now will be implemented this year with this equation. And in 2020-21 financial year, the further tightening of uh, CO2 or the fuel consumption norms based upon the weight category, the equation given is C is equal to 0 0.055 into W plus 66. So the manufacturer, the manufacturer has to be uh, below this green line in uh, this year and below the this this line in 2020 so fuel consumption has to be below this otherwise there will be some penalty on the manufacturer so we have uh, covered the cafe cafe standard now the this, which will be uh, done by the ministry of surface transport and highway and ICAT, which is agency in Manesar doing the various emission compliance, COP or type approval tests. So in collaboration, they will be implement the CAFE standards. The star labeling will be uh, still the implementation agency remains BEE, Bureau of uh, Energy Efficiency. But the procedural or the uh, all the groundwork they are doing and it will also be implemented maybe this year or next year but no date has been fixed for cafe already the date has been fixed for be they are working the modalities so, uh, the example is given here that for uh, if we drive our vehicle for 100 kilometers and the based upon the fuel consumption if it's seven liter for 100 kilometer it will be given a five star label and similarly uh, the labeling will become poorer if the fuel con consumption 
like for one star it uh, increases to 12 liter for 100 kilometer so you can say it will be some around 8 kmpl so it will be given a poor rating of one star now another example given here uh, this this star labeling will also be based upon the curve weight of the vehicle and uh, may maybe uh, like a this is the coll uh, collected data of fuel consumption of, of 2009 2010 based upon the uh, based upon the uh, fuel consumption achieved on a vehicle the label will be issued like on uh, these curves now since the uh, manufacturer will be making different curve weight vehicles so a weighted average will be calculated based upon the number of vehicles sold and the fuel consumption they achieve a weighted figure will be derived to achieve the and put a label on that on his vehicles so every year you can say they will declare that they have made a uh, vehicle 800 kg this is the number of vehicles and this is the fuel consumption they achieved in ICAT. So a weighted average will be cal calculated for all the vehicle they made that year. And a label will be issued based upon the average they achieved for that year. So uh, this what is curve weight of the vehicle is, the, you can say, the uh, weight without any passenger or even without any uh, petrol empty tank there is one is curve weight it's like a like an unladen weight right then then there is a figure reference weight in reference weight which we uh, calculate for the classification of vehicle while doing emission test we put a weight of 150 kg additional on the curve weight like so uh, for example if a vehicle has a thousand kg unladen weight or curve weight then we add one, 150 kg further, which is equivalent to, you can say, two passengers, some 40%, 50% fuel, and a stepney. So then 1150 is the reference weight. So while uh, doing the type approval test or the emission test, we have to do as per the table method based upon the reference weight. And, uh, and the you can say the load equation on the dynamometer on the chassis dyno is based upon the reference weight of the vehicle. So labeling, labeling will be done based upon where we lie on the fuel, uh, fuel consumption on the vehicle. So like the five star, this is the five, uh, curve equal to five star, which is the, you can say the fuel consumption is better than, uh, is better than the other star ratings. And we are at the bottom most part of the fuel consumption right and the kind of label uh, will be similar as i told you to the electrical appliances so like in this example there it's a four star which are marked in red are given it's a four star vehicle right and uh, since it will be for fuel economy clearly it will be for fuel economy not electrical consumption will be marked on this type of vehicle if it's a petrol or a diesel will be clearly marked and the fuel uh, consumption kilometer per liter will be given so and other information regarding the vehicle data will also be added at the bottom so this label will be available on the car itself so that the customer can see that it's a five star so fuel consumption will be very good so it's a clear indication of fuel consumption to any layman right Another way, as I told you, that CO2 and fuel consumption figures are uh, exactly correlated. The, the CO2 figure, uh, figure uh, or the CO2 target lines for 2016, this blue line, and for 2021, it will be the red line. And this corresponds to 113 gram per kilometer for a vehicle having mass of 1145 uh, kgs right and for 2016 
or because this is going to implement only uh, next year so it will be 130 gram per kilometer for a vehicle of 1037 kgs so from the curve you can see that in in 5 uh, years there, there will be around um, some 10 to 15% reduction targeted in co2 clear so till now we have seen the fuel fuel consumption challenges being faced by the various manufacturer and how they they have to meet the city driving the highway driving the ari fuel consumption figures and now the star labeling or the cafe standard will also come which the manufacturers have to meet for being you can say competitive to each other and give uh, and give uh, benefit of fuel consumption to the customer now we we see the next uh, uh, challenge to the manufacturer which is the performance of the vehicle now the performance uh, again we take the example of uh, these two vehicles now this honda city the performance wise as compared to hyundai varna the peak power of honda city is 100 horse power as compared to 128 hp the maximum torque is also less 200 newton meter the hyundai varna gives a better max torque of 260 newton meter and this the higher power and higher torque in hyundai varna is translating into the acceleration so that uh, the hyundai varna is able to achieve 0 to 100 km per hour only in 10.62 seconds as compared to 12.8 second in honda city so more power more torque this translates into you can say the drivability the pickup which is being clearly seen uh, if we compare these two vehicles further the performance parameter uh, which a customer desires is the number of gears shifting in city driving to be minimum that he is able to run in city traffic or in small lanes without changing much number of gears so that he is like able to drive in a third gear in internal road of city he he need not he need not go into second gear so number of gear shifting should be minimum and also the for to, uh, top speed on highways he he want faster uh, uh, top speed on highways to reach early to uh, his destination so these are some of the performance or drivability parameters required by a driver which is a the uh, car manufacturer has to look into and uh, provide in his car features the third uh, challenge to car manufacturer which is you can say the most difficult part because this is a legislated part the other two up to some extent are legislated but they are not very stringent but the emission if we are not qualifying the emission we cannot sell the vehicle so like in uh, the emissions uh, started coming in europe in 1990 but in, in india uh, we started around 1999 maybe 9 to 10 years after europe so we started with bs1 bharat stage 1 now bharat stage 4 is being implemented across india from 1st april 2017 so from to uh, 1st april throughout india it will be bs4 this bs4 for 13 metro cities happened in 2010 but across india it will be happening in 2017 then we uh, will be uh, going for bs5 bs6 but of course bs5 uh, has been eliminated we are leapfrogging to bs6 directly in 2020 so now uh, the road map for bs4 and 5 and of course now bs6 is like this the B, uh, bs4 as i told you is going to be implemented across india first april 2017 bs5 uh, which was earlier planned 
but due to uh, last year due to the delhi being declared the most polluted city and other indian cities are also like in the top uh, polluted polluting cities so it has been decided with the industry by the ministry that we should we should eliminate uh, euro 5 or bs5 and directly go into bs6 which will be equal to the euro 6 so uh, what are what is going to happen in euro 6 if we compare with the uh, euro 4 what are the so what are going to be the additional parameters uh, of uh, engine out emission which need need to, to be monitored like uh, carbon monoxide is already there so we will be reducing carbon monoxide from 1000 mg per kilometer to uh, it, it, there would won't be much much change in uh, co similar thc total hydrocarbon it will be uh, 100 against 100 not much change but nox will be reducing from 80 to 60 so some 15 to 20% reduction in uh, nox will be ha happening but the uh, we will be we will be uh, going into nmhc which was not there in the uh, bs4 that we will start non methane hydrogen carbon measurement and the values are given for different classification of vehicles m m is the uh, passenger vehicles and n r are the commercial vehicles depending upon the reference weight which we discuss so three classification of uh, commercial vehicles are there 1 2 3 so depending upon the reference weight the emission values are also different heavier vehicles have been given some liberty of higher emission so uh, when we go to euro 6 so nm at sea non methane hydrocarbon will be monitored and for the first time the pm will be coming into this uh, gasoline or positive ignition engines or cng positive ignition covering gasoline cng lpg so particulate matter will be for first time monitored on positive ignition engine and also will be coming in the number of particles so the counting of the particles pm particles will be done for the first time and the values have been given in the last uh, column in the last row so uh, particular standards are applied to the vehicle with direct in injection engines only bs5 and bs6 norms are aligned with euro 5 and euro 6 norms so this is the euro 6 norms or the bs6 norms which we are going to adapt to be implemented in 2020 april now for the diesel or the compression ignition engines here the uh, when we move from bs4 to bs6 the co value will further not be reduced but nox value you can say from 250 it will be only 80 so major reduction in uh, milligram per kilometer the total hydrocarbon and nox values will be coming down to almost half from the present bs4 values and particulate matter you can see from 25 to only 4.5 so major major reduction is going to be going to happen in pm and nox also and similarly as we discussed for positive ignition engines for ci engine also the particulate number counting will start so this is the additional test or the equipment we will have for particulate counting the particulate number in the exhaust this is the, the particle number counting is uh, like a limit to be imposed that the finer finer particles which can directly get absorbed into blood to limit that because the larger particles our lungs are able to filter but the final particles after going in through lung they directly go into blood so they are limited the final particle being emitted by the engines 
so this is the bs6 norms now the uh, road map of implementation as i told you earlier earlier the uh, the plan was bs4 to be implemented in 2017 this year bs5 was to come in 2021 and bs6 2024 but due to the re recent developments so it has been decided uh, that we skip the bs5 and directly jump to to uh, bs6 in 2020 and the other challenge which was there was the availability of the fuel but now the oil refineries ioc bp hp they have agreed to supply the bs5 uh, or 6 fuel they have agreed that by 2020 they will supply throughout india having sulfur of only 10 ppm which is required for the after treatment devices to be put on vehicle having uh, these kind of emission so that fuel will be available in time so it's a major challenge to any automobile manufacturer to me uh, jump from bs4 to bs6 the time available is only 3 years so lot of challenges are there for the engineers working in the emission department of these companies but but the only good thing will be that uh by 2020 then we will catch up with europe so they will be also euro 6 we will be bs6 so in 2020 we will be at par as far as emission standards are concerned with european car manufacturers now uh, on emission for uh, some other challenges or the recent uh, developments as you know the volkswagen episode where it was found that the emission on the vehicle was much more than being tested in the laboratory so that was detected by agency in usa and a thorough investigation has been done and you know that there is a major penalty on the volkswagen in uh, usa and their cars being sold not only usa europe or even in india so they they have put some defeat device defeat devices where the emission while the vehicle was running on road was much higher than what was being tested in the laboratory so to counter this episode so that this is not happening uh, again by some other manufacturer now in europe uh, to from 2017 this year the on road testing of emission of on the vehicle will also start as well as the lab test in india from 2020 when bs6 is happening we uh, it is also proposed that online road testing for emission measurement shall also start so and uh, uh, this will be called like bs6 as per rde real driving emission so lab measurement as well as real driving emission so real driving emission on actual road when the vehicle is driven in a traffic or on a hilly ter terrain terrain so actual measurement will be done and the equipment that will be doing the measurement uh, will be called pams or portable emission measurement system so like on the uh, if you see on the left picture the vehicle is being tested in a laboratory on a chassis dynamometer and on the right side the vehicle is ta being tested for emission actually on the road the emission equipment has been installed uh, in the car itself so while driving in different uh, uh, highway uh, village road so mountain road so all the condition will be uh, the vehicle will be put for measurement of emission so this is going to be another real challenge because indian industry still is not having the this kind of pams equipment also and what kind of cycle now the ari and icat they have started uh, developing this cycle suitable for indian uh, type of traffic or driving conditions so soon the cycle will be decided then the testing based upon that with pams on the rde real driving emission that will start happening 
<coughs> so uh, these these are the emission challenges happening uh, for the automobile manufacturer or the guys who are working for emission development emission calibration real real challenges these are now uh, we are seeing the fuel consumption challenges the emission challenges now this slide is a generic uh, generic uh, regarding what the manufacturers have done to meet these fuel consumption or emission challenges just we run through we will not go into detail of these but what has been done in recent 8 10 years by the manufacturer so the improvements uh, they have done is on the air handling system so that the volumetric efficiency of the engine is better from the single overhead cam they have gone into dual overhead cam systems from two valve per cylinder they have gone to four valve per cylinder for better filling at uh, particularly at higher rpm then the uh, variable well timing and lift has been put for you can say the better volumetric efficiency throughout the working uh, speed of the engine examples are like honda city have given iv tech uh, engine similarly honda i verna is giving vt vt on their engine for variable timing and lift for better filling of the engine then the turbocharging has further increased the air charge density so that we are able to take more po power output from the same engine so the turbochargers which are available available are fixed geometry the beginning fixed geometry turbochargers came then waste gated turbochargers came and now the vgt variable geometry turbocharger which are for better air filling then better uh, pickup then also emission control in the all the latest vehicle vgt turbos are there the further uh, the next work that has been done is on the fuel system earlier in the diesel engines either inline pumps or rotary pumps were there now most of the car suvs are having cidi diesel engines only common in direct injection engines the petrol vehicles maybe 15 years ago was with carburetor now they are all mpfi uh, some of the suvs have shifted to gdi even some of the bike manufacturers are also trying gdi the gasoline direct injection See, on the lines it used to be on the diesel engine so gasoline direct injection and of course hybrid should not be covered in fuel system but hybridization of the petrol or the diesel is also happening from the fuel consumption and the emission point of view the combustion improvements have been done uh, are direct injection over idi both uh, both in case of um, gasoline and diesel engine then dtsi on the bajaj uh, bike this is the, uh, this is the digital twin spark ignition dual or digital also they say t t is twin d is digital only digital twin spark uh, ignition but two spark two sparks so you can say there is a uniform spark happening so the combustion will be better fuel consumption and the emission will be better then the major work has also been done but typically on you can say the gasoline the after treatment because in gasoline the major work for emission reduction is done by the after treatment only the catalytic converter only so three way cat twc being on gasoline or cng engines engines improvement have been done on three way cat then on diesel engine doc plus poc diesel oxidation catalyst and partial oxidation uh, filters have been put then the like when we go from uh, go for bs5 or bs6 dpf has to come which is the diesel particulate filter which uh, retains all the carbon soot captures the carbon soot 
then for definitely for bs6 scr which is the selective catalytic reduction for nox reduction and lnt lean nox trap which will trap the no2 or no no so the lot of work to be done on uh, these after treatments then on the engine front like our uh, first topic air handling system that was also on the engine improvements on the engine then the other improvements on engine has been engine friction reduction so that is been done by low viscosity oils engine oils better grades have been used synthetic are also coming now then optimized bearing sizes piston rings or the accessories which which have a uh, less parasitic losses they have been optimized then another very important work done is engine downsizing and operation at lower rpm so the like you say the displacement of the engine has been reduced one example i give is like on tata sumo it used to be a 3 liter engine when it was very popular but due to fuel efficiency emission now the latest vehicles safari or hexa they are with a 2.2 liter engine so smaller engine cost effective less friction which is the results into better low friction better pickup low weight so downsizing has been very important and operation at lower rpm typically in a diesel engine the now the engines because of the availability of turbocharging the gear ratios are selected in a way so that the engine is operating at lower engine rpm so engine operating at lower rpm low friction low fuel going into it so better fuel consumption so just a run through of the improvements done or to be done for bsx by the various manufacturers anything you want to ask on this नहीं वो तो इंडिकेशन ही है आगे यू हैव टू सी उसके आगे डिटेल में क्या दुआ हुआ है बट जैसे डाइकॉर दी है या सी आर डी दी सी आर डी आई दी है दैट हैज रिलेशन सी आर डी कॉमन एंड डायरेक्ट इंजेक्शन आपको मालूम ही है राइट अभी जैसे एक टाटा जीनॉन में एल एस डी लिखते हैं लिमिटेड स्लिप डिफरेंशियल तो कई चीजों का रिलेशन है कईयों का तो वो मॉडल का ही डेजिग्नेशन है बट नथिंग टेक्निकल यू कैन से डेजिग्नेशन ही है उसमें कितने फीचर ऐड किए हैं उससे वो उन्होंने एल एक्स आई वी एक्स आई ऐसे कर देते हैं कईयों का रिलेशन है जैसे होंडा सिटी में एस एम टी है सो एम टी इज मैनुअल ट्रांसमिशन राइट कईयों का रिलेशन है कईयों का उनका इंटरनल डेजिग्नेशन ही यस तो हाइब्रिड है उसमें तो इसलिए उन्होंने दिए तो कईयों में रिलेशन है कईयों में नहीं भी है सयाज विल वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग हां जी तो एम हॉक का भी मतलब है नहीं नेम ही है बट सी आर डी आई रिलेशन नो आई डी आई आर नॉट इन यूज आई डी आई अभी तो ये सब डी आई है ना डीजल में डीजल में तो आप बोलो कि जो नेचुरली एस्पिरेटेड है स्विफ्ट इज डी सिर्फ लास्ट में जो हुआ है टाटा इंडिका या ये इंडिगो आईडीआई था पी एस थ्री तक अब तो सारी कॉमन रेली है इन डीजल डीजल में नहीं देखो वी टेक उन्होंने भी जो वी टेक बोला है ना वो होंडा का ही प्रोपराइटरी है तो कई क्या करते हैं जैसे सी आर डी आई है इनको प्रोपराइट प्रोपराइटर भी करवा लेते हैं रजिस्टर करवा लेते हैं फिर वही यूज कर पाते हैं अब आप सी आर डी आई भी देखोगे सी आर डी आई मेरे हिसाब से एसेंट एक्सेंट में था बाकी कोई लिख नहीं पाया उसको 
बाकी किसी ने डायकोर लिखा किसी ने अभी ये हेक्सा ने क्या लिखा हैक्सा इज गिविंग सम अदर नेम फॉर देयर कॉमन सी आर डी तो सबसे पहले जिसने रजिस्टर करवा लिया वही उसको टेक्नोलॉजी को लेके चल पड़ता अब अब वीजीटी सबसे पहले मेरे ख्याल हुई वरना ने लिखा अब बाकी वीजीटी नहीं लिख पा रहे हैं वो थोड़ा उसको आगे पीछे करके ही हेक्सा की एग्जांपल में हम देखेंगे उन दोनों ने कॉमन एल का भी क्या नाम दिया वेरीकॉर और इसी तरह जो उसका टर्बो वीजीटी है उसको भी कुछ और ही नाम दे रहे हैं हम बट टेक्नोलॉजी इज सेम होगा वो वो वेरिएबल टाइमिंग वेरिएबल लिफ्टी है मतलब सेम सेम तो टेक्नोलॉजी तो वही है कि हमें वेल टाइमिंग वेरी करना है वेल लिफ्ट वेरी करना है सो दैट फिलिंग इज बेटर जो वॉल्यूमेट्रिक एफिशिएंसी है थ्रू ओवर दी आरपीएम रेंज टारगेट हमारा यही है इसको हम डिस्कस करते हैं तो सबसे पहले वेरिएबल वेल टाइमिंग एंड लिफ्टिंग हम डिस्कस कर रहे हैं जो होंडा सिटी वालों ने दिया अप टू टू थाउजेंड एट इनका वी टेक इंजन होता था टू थाउजेंड एट में जो मॉडल लॉन्च किया इन्होंने वो आई वी टेक आया तो दैट वाज ओनली इन पेट्रोल तो दो साल पहले इन्होंने डीजल डीजल भी दे दिया आई डी टेक बोला उसको और अभी भी जो आज ही लॉन्च होने वाली नहीं फोर्टीन फेब को लॉन्च हो रही है ना इनकी 2017, बट इंजन ये इतना बड़ी है देर रिटेनिंग सेम जो आई बी टेक टू वाला था पेट्रोल वाला सेम देर रिटेनिंग लाइट है ना लाइट वेट है खैर कुछ इन्होंने सेफ्टी फीचर दो हजार सत्रह वाली में एड किए बट दैट इज ऑन दर बैग एंड अदर वो फिर हैवी भी था हैवी भी था अब देखो ना जो हमने वी हैव डिस्कस द फ्यूल कंजम्पशन और अमीशन वो इतने बड़े चैलेंजेस हैं समवेयर सम बॉडी हैज टू सेक्रीफाइस आल्सो ना और उसको ऐड करने के लिए इन्होंने बैग दे दिए हैं वो चीजें दी हैं बट देखो होंडा सिटी क्यों बिकती है इसकी फ्यूल कंजम्पशन और रिलायबिलिटी मेंटेनेंस भी कम है एज कम्पेयर टू फोर ईयर से वो तो अब इतनी एड कर रहे हैं वो <laughs> यही बात है तो टू इन टू थाउजेंड एट होंडा सिटी वॉज लॉन्च विद आई वी टेक विच इज इंटेलिजेंट वी टेक वी टेक उससे पहले भी था टू थाउजेंड एट से पहले सो वी टेक इज वेरिएबल वेल टाइमिंग एंड लिफ्ट इज इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कंट्रोल तो वेरिएबल वेल टाइमिंग टाइमिंग भी वेरी करते हैं लिफ्ट भी वो वेरी करते हैं विद थ्रू इसी अब जस्ट जस्ट टू है बेसिक्स ऑफ वेल वेल टाइमिंग हमारे वेल टाइमिंग इन ए नॉर्मल नेचुरली एस्पिरेटर इंजन यूज टू बी फिक्स्ड ठीक है जी तो इनटेक वेल खुलेगा एट सम टाइमिंग देर इज अ रेंज देर इज अ रेंज तो वो 15 खुल जाए 20 खुल जाए 25 खुल जाए तो वो इनटेक टीडीसी से पहले खुल जाएगा एंड हमारा जैसे पहली पिक्चर में दिखाया चार्ज अंदर जा रहा है ठीक है ना यदि डीजल इंजन है एयर अंदर जा रही है यदि पेट्रोल इंजन है एमपीएफआई है तो चार्ज अंदर जा रहा है मिक्स करके ठीक है उसके बाद हमारा कंप्रेशन स्ट्रोक में दोनों वेल्स बंद है एंड कंप्रेशन इज हैपनिंग एंड एंड वेरी नियर टीडीसी स्पार्क हो जाएगा और डीजल में इंजेक्शन हो जाएगा ये पावर स्ट्रोक हमारा ठीक है पावर स्ट्रोक में हमारा वेल्व जो एग्जॉस्ट वेल्व है वो बॉटम डेड सेंटर से कुछ 30, 40 डिग्री पहले खुल जाएगा right? और अब ये लास्ट में एग्जॉस्ट स्ट्रोक है जिसमें एग्जॉस्ट वेल खुला है एंड दी दम्बस्टिक आफ्टर कंबस्टन गैसेज आर थ्रोन आउट थ्रू दी एग्जॉस्ट वेल तो इसमें सब इवेंट्स इंजन आरपीएम से इंडिपेंडेंट है 
इंजन आरपीएम इट इंजन में भी आइडलिंग इट इज थाउजेंड आर पी एम इन केस ऑफ पेट्रोल इंजन डीजल में यूजली दी आरपीएम टॉप आरपीएम आर लिमिटेड टू थ्री थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड और फोर थाउजेंड तो पेट्रोल में इट कैन गो टू सिक्स थाउजेंड बाइक में तो आपने देखा आठ आठ हजार भी है तो ये इवेंट हमारे फिक्स रहेंगे तो जो वॉल्यूमीट्रिक एफिशिएंसी है वी कैन ऑप्टिमाइज फॉर ए स्मॉल रेंज इट में भी टू थाउजेंड इफ वी ऑप्टिमाइज दी वेल टाइमिंग फॉर टू थाउजेंड आरपीएम देन वी सेक्रीफाइस वॉल्यूमीट्रिक एफिशियंसी और हायर आरपीएम 4000 पे 6000 पे वो खराब हो जाएगी यदि हमने हायर आरपीएम के लिए ऑप्टिमाइज कर दिया तो लो लो आरपीएम पे वॉल्यूमेट्रिक एफिशिएंसी खराब हो जाएगी सो दिस इज ड्रॉबैक ऑफ फिक्स्ड टाइमिंग एंड लिफ्ट आल्सो और फिक्स टाइमिंग जब हम यूज किया है एज यू आर सेइंग तो हम हमने देखा है कि इनटेक वैल्स वी यूज टू ओपन 10 टू 25 डिग्री बिफोर टीडीसी राइट Why we need to open it uh, before TDC? Because higher engine speed have shorter time for air fuel injection. Time come milta millisecond me. Higher speed decrease volumetric efficiency drop ho jati hai. Time come mil raha hai. Internal friction travel karne ki itni hai. Volumetric efficiency come ho jati hai high speed pe. Or time delay for well to open fully. So what is the guideline if we have fixed timing? At higher engine speeds, intake valves must open earlier and more for more air entrapping. जिस गाड़ी की RPM ज़्यादा है, 4000, 6000 है, we we prefer to have 25 degree before TDC opening. यदि गाड़ी के RPM कम है, 1500 RPM का कोई genset का engine है, then we have 10 degree before TDC. So this is the guideline for volumetric efficiency improvement in fixed timing intake valve. opening similarly intake closing also so closed after bdc 40 to 45 deg uh, 50 degree 30 bhi rakh sakte hain 40 bhi 50 i have seen up to 60 degree so why we have this uh, later than bdc because the intake momentum of the charge coming we try to utilize by the ram effect so that energy will be filling more charge e even though compression stroke has started फिर भी वो एनर्जी इतनी है कि उसको एक्स्ट्रा फिलिंग होके वॉल्यूमेट रैप से नहीं इंप्रूव कर जाती सो दस एट हायर इंजन स्पीड इनटेक वेल शेल क्लोज लेटर इन दिस साइकिल दिस इज दी लेयर बट इसका नेगेटिव uh, देखें यदि लोअर आरपीएम होंगे हमारा चार्ज भी आई और उधर से कंप्रेशन स्ट्रोक शुरू हो गया तो हमारा चार्ज बैकफ्लो भी कर सकता है राइट right? उससे क्या है कि जो इफेक्टिव कंप्रेशन रेशियो है हम तो कंप्रेशन रेशियो कैलकुलेट करते हैं ना टीडीसी पे और बीडीसी की मूवमेंट पे बट ड्यू टू इनटेक वेल क्लोजिंग लेटर कंप्रेशन रेशियो डिक्रीज भी हो जाएगा एट टिपिकली लोअर आरपी जब आइडल कर रहा है या 1500 सौ आरपीएम पे है तो कंप्रेशन रेशियो इफेक्टिव कंप्रेशन रेशियो नॉट दी थोरेटिकल वो कम भी हो सकती है इसी तरह सेकेंड है वेल ओवरलैप so valve overlap occurs when both intake and exhaust valves are at the same time ki udhar se humne intake bhi chalu kar diya aur udhar se abhi exhaust ho raha hai so that is the valve overlap period iska bhi same hai yadi hamara rpm engine ka higher hai we need higher overlap yadi engine ka rpm kam hai to hame overlap kam chahiye nahi to fresh charge hi स्कैवेंजिंग आप जानते ही हो स्कैवेंजिंग के दौरान वो एस्केप ही हो जाएगा एंड बैड पार्ट विल बी इन केस ऑफ ए फोर स्ट्रोक पेट्रोल इंजन क्योंकि एम से चार्ज मिक्स होके आ रहा है तो वो पेट्रोल भी हमारा एस्केप हो जाएगा तो वी नीड टू हैव ए ओवरलैप बट अगेन इफ वी ऑप्टिमाइज फॉर हायर आरपीएम लोअर आरपीएम के लिए हमें नुकसान होगा सो वट आर द्रॉबैक्स ऑफ फिक्स वॉल ट्रेन Fuel economy and power can only be optimized at one particular RPM throttle position. Okay. If the intake valves are ma made to open a relatively small amount to privilege drivability at low engine speed, so what we require at low engine speed, that valve's time be be come or lift be come. 
the engine would not be allowed to intake enough air at higher engine speed sacrificing outright performance right higher speed pe performance will be better right now contrary if the intake valves are made to open wide to privilege breathing at higher engine speeds performance at low engine speeds would be compromised as i told you the effective compression ratio will go down theek hai ji तो अब इसको ओवरकम करने के लिए जो आप वी टी वी टी टेक्नोलॉजी बोलते हैं वी टेक इन द टर्म्स ऑफ होंडा दे हैव डन यूज दैट ठीक है जी तो पहले टोली वी टेक वॉज देयर बिफोर 2008 अब इफ यू सी दीज टू फिगर्स इनको आप देखिए ये है नॉर्मल वेल ट्रेन जिसमें फिक्स इवेंट्स हैं वेल्व ओपनिंग वेल्व क्लोजिंग की तो दिस इज ए फोर वेल्व इंजन टू यदि इंटेक हम देख रहे हैं इसमें तो दो इंटेक ये, ये दो इंटेक वेल्व हैं इनको दो रॉकर राम थ्रू टू कैम्स थ्रू ए ओवरहेड कैम ऑपरेट कर रही है सो द इवेंट्स आर फिक्स एंड ड्रॉबैक्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन नाउ इन वी टेक वर्ट दे हैव डन दे हैव इंट्रोड्यूस ए this orange uh, or yellow color cam between the two intake cams isi tarah iski ek rocker arm bhi unhone ye laga di hai theek hai ye rocker arm laga di hai ye rocker ye ye cam laga diya hai right jo iska lift hai it is much more than the standard cams when the engine rpm are lower hamara jo ye fix cam lage hue hain usse lift aur timing aayega right इंजन के जैसे ही हमने एक्सीटर दिया 2000 के ऊपर जाने लगा थ्रू दी स्पीड सेंसर थ्रू दी सोलिनॉइड एंड हाइड्रोलिक अरेंजमेंट जो ये थर्ड एक्स्ट्रा कैम लगाया दैट विल कम इन टू पिक्चर उससे वैल्व की लिफ्ट और टाइमिंग चेंज कर जाएगा ठीक है मैकेनिज्म आगे दिखाया हुआ है ये, ये आप देखोगे ये ये ब्लू कलर की दो कैम नॉर्मल वाली हैं ये बीच में जो एक ग्रीन कलर की कैम लगी है ये हायर स्पीड वाली कैम है तो देर इज ए पिन हेयर देर इज ए पिन एंड देर इज ए ऑयल सर्किट ये ये ऑयल सर्किट है हमारा सो लोअर स्पीड पे देर इज नो ऑयल कमिंग इन दिस पैसेज थ्रू दी सोलिनॉइड्स और इनटेक इनटेक आर ऑपरेटिंग थ्रू दी दीज टू स्टैंडर्ड कैम्प्स एट लो रेवोल्यूशन so these are the primary uh, rocker and uh, primary cams only which are working at that time the pin is uh, the pin which will be locking the middle rocker or the high lift cam is disengaged jaise hi hamare engine ke rpm right side pe dikhaya uh, higher rpm hue to so rpm sensor se signal gaya solenoid ne oil ko passage de diya to so ye jo circuit mein high pressure oil aa gaya right aur is pin ko press kar diya ये पिन राइट right को मूव हुआ एंड द मिडल कैम गेट्स इंगेज और उससे फिर जो वेल्व के लिफ्ट और टाइमिंग इंक्रीज कर जाएंगे सो डिपेंडिंग ऑन दी इंजन आरपीएम कैम का कौन सी कैम काम करेगी वो डिसाइड सिस्टम कर लेगा और वॉल्यूमीटर एफिशिएंसी हमें थ्रू आउट दी रेंज ही हमें बेटर मिल जाएगी सो चार्ज फिलिंग विल बी मच बेटर ठीक है जी अरेंजमेंट इज सिंपल मैकेनिकल सिस्टम ओनली ओनली दी कंट्रोल आर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक तो एडवांटेज हम देखें इसका ये कन्वेंशनल इंजन का जो टॉर्क था उससे वी आर एबल टू गेट सम 15 20 न्यूटन मीटर हायर टॉर्क थ्रू आउट व्हेन वी आर यूजिंग द वेरिएबल वेल्व इंजन at higher rpm also at lower rpm also because hamari volumetric efficiency improve ho gayi and we are able to um, uh, inject more fuel to hamari power achhi aane lagi aur iska advantage ek aur ho jayega ki we will be able to run our engine at lower rpm lower rpm pe hum jab chalayenge to fuel efficiency waise hi hamara achhi aa jayegi टॉर्क इज बेटर 
सो इन प्लेस ऑफ रनिंग व्हीकल इन फोर्थ गियर वी कैन रन इन फिफ्थ गियर फिफ्थ गियर में रनिंग इंजन आर पी डाउन हो जाएंगे बिकॉज पावर इज अवेलेबल बिकॉज हाई टॉर्क इज अवेलेबल तो हमारा फ्यूल एफिशियंसी अमीशन भी कम हो जाएगा तो दिस वॉज इन वी टेक ओनली लिफ्ट एंड टाइमिंग वी आर चेंजिंग वेन आई वी टेक केम देन दी टी सी केम वेरिएबल ओवरलैप टाइमिंग कंट्रोल भी कर दिया उन्होंने ओवरलैप को भी वेरी कर दिया उन्होंने थ्रू थ्रू दी यू कैन से सेंट्री फिगल अरेंजमेंट ऑन द कैम शाफ्ट उन्होंने ओवरलैप को भी चेंज कर दिया सो यू कैन से दी विद रिस्पेक्ट टू इनटेक एंड एग्जॉस्ट कैम का ओरिएंटेशन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टीडीसी चेंज कर दिया ताकि जो ओवरलैप का वैल्यू है वो ही चेंज हो जाए ठीक है जी तो हमारे पास वैल टाइमिंग और लिफ्ट भी हो गया वीटेक से और वीटी से वैल ओवरलैपिंग भी चेंज हो गया सो वी कर दी आई वी टेक चेंज ठीक है जी तो वीटेक प्लस वीटीसी so if we just uh, run this slide so vtec is valve timing and lift control at low rpm it staggers the timing of intake valve and make their lift asymmetric which creates swirl effect within the combustion chamber at higher rpm it operates the valve lift with high lift and long duration cam profile vtc it is able to advance and retard valve opening by altering the phasing of the inlet cam shaft to best match the engine load at any given moment so in another picture shown here low engine speed the valve lift is this much or at higher engine speed valve ka lift bad jayega aur filling better ho jayegi aur arrangement jaise humne udhar picture mein dekha tha it is shown uh, component wise here तो ये दिस इज दिंक्रोनाइजिंग पिन विच विल बी ऑपरेटेड थ्रू सोलिनॉइड एंड हाइड्रोलिक सिस्टम हाइड्रोलिक प्रेशर से तो इसको एंगेज डिसंगेज डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द इंजन आरपीएम हमारा लिफ्ट और ड्यूरेशन चेंज हो जाएगा सो एडवांटेजेस ऑफ फाइव टेक इंक्रीज अक्रॉस अब्रॉड पावर बैंड इट बूस फ्यूल इकोनॉमी एंड रिड्यूस एग्जॉस एमिशन एंड नो नीड टू एड टर्बो चार्जर आपने देखा लोअर आरपीएम पे हमारा टॉर्क 10 टू 15 न्यूटन मीटर बढ़ गया तो गाड़ी की ड्राइवेबिलिटी और पिकअप इंप्रूव हो गया उसी से तो हमें एक एडिशनल टर्बो चार्जर लगाने का जरूरत ही नहीं है इन दिस आई वी टेक वहीकल नो टर्बो चार्जर इज देयर सो यू कैन से टेन टू फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड टर्बो माइनस कर दिया ओनली बाई प्लेइंग विद दिस वेल टाइमिंग ऑप्टिमाइजेशन तो दिस इज ए कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव सोल्यूशन can be done on the existing engine without any external component coming because with the turbo charger so many other systems will come charger cooler will come right packaging will be difficult sir if we have the dtec engine then we should use the turbo charger abhi hum baat kar rahe hain petrol ki theek hai na petrol mein uh, they have not used honda ne use nahi kiya aaj ki date mein but dtec diesel mein to turbo lagega hi lagega क्योंकि उसमें मैंने आपको पहले एक स्टेटमेंट दिया कि जो पेट्रोल इंजन कैन गो अप टू सिक्स थाउजेंड आरपीएम सो यू कैन टेक पावर थ्रू आरपीएम पावर पावर इज टू पाई एन टी बाई समिनोमिनेटर राइट सिक्सटी तो एन ज्यादा है पेट्रोल इंजन में पावर आपने ले लिया उससे एन से ले लिया आरपीएम से डीजल में आप मैंने आपको बोला यू कैन नॉट एक्सीड थ्री थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड और इन सम इंजन फोर थाउजेंड क्योंकि जो डीजल इंजेक्शन का फिनोमिना है डीजल इंजन के पार्ट्स हैवी हैं राइट सो चार हजार के ऊपर यू कैनोट डीजल इंजन हार्डली फंक्शन तो हमें उसको पावर लेने के लिए टॉर्क लेना पड़ेगा तो टॉर्क के, के लिए टॉर्क हमारे डीजल इंजन में टर्बो चार्जर से ही हम इंप्रूव कर पाएंगे सो वी हैव डिस्कस दी वेरिएबल वेल टाइमिंग एंड लिफ्ट technology being offered by honda as iv tech now we move to the next topic now just uh, on this uh, honda car engine so honda is going to launch launch their 2017 model 
this month or today itself so in this uh, 2017 model uh, they are retaining their iv tech for petrol and id tech for uh, diesel so the power pack you can say remain same so it will be offered um, uh, diesel manual transmission petrol manual tra transmission plus in petrol uh, they are going to give cvt for the first time C cvt is continuously variable transmission which gives which gives So CVT, uh, it's like an automatic where the you can say number of speeds available are infinite. The other technical features of this uh, new coming up model are the uh, projector headlamps, which are being given by almost all the manufacturers now. Automatic climate control, LED daytime running lights, <coughs> new LED tail lights. And in the infotainment system, there is a seven-inch LCD display, new boot lid, ABS with EVD, Isofix child seat, dual front airbag, side and curtain airbags. So these are the new features being given in this model, being introduced this year. So the projector headlamps, as shown in this picture, so they are for uh, better focusing than the normal light and also it gives a uh, attractive look in the frontal of the vehicle the rear tail lights ha have also been improved to look better now this uh, cvt model the cvt uh, is having a torque uh, converter in place of a dual dual clutch the normal automatics have either a dual clutch or a uh, torque converter so torque converter uh, is a better option variable ratio belts of course the cvt consists of uh, various ratio belts for the different range of uh, speed and torque requirements and this particular cvt is lighter weight being given by honda city and the advantages with this cvt 2017 cvt honda city fuel consumption better than automatic and even better than manual transmission usually manual transmission always give best fuel consumption but this cvt being lightweight and with the torque converter the fuel consumption is even better than manual and you can experience better acceleration than a dual clutch cvt because the torque transfer is very smooth so the acceleration is uh, better but some negative points have also been mentioned uh, for this that at the top uh, speed you can say speeds above 130 140 the performance is not that good but usually in indian driving conditions this will be a successful model because the speeds are not that high now the diesel honda uh, city which was launched in 2014 and uh, they had done lot of work when they launched id tech t is for diesel technology so the uh, honda city was having a 2.2 liter diesel engine but for indian uh, customer being very sensitive to fuel consumption so they developed a smaller diesel engine for indian market which is 47 kg lighter than the their benchmark engine the available honda engine so, uh, for higher fuel consumption plus better acceleration this uh, engine was typically developed for an indian market this is a 1.5 liter id tech engine and key benefits uh, of the engine are compactness lightness reduced mechanical friction and low engine cooling system losses so how they are achieving these advantages so this is a all aluminium cylinder head open deck high pressure die cast engine block with lightweight cast iron cylinder liners normally uh, even for petrol engines or the diesel engines the cylinder head is usually 
of aluminum alloy but the uh, block is cast iron but to make it lightweight they have made the block also in aluminum alloy and they are using cast iron liners high strength nitrided and lightweight crankshaft with thinner main and general uh, crank pin journals to reduce friction the l into d uh, value of the journals they have reduced or you can say the optimized lightweight piston with shorter and thinner skirt lighter connecting rod for better acceleration all these components have been made lighter and which will also result into low friction also they also improved uh, the engine uh, for this engine so low viscosity diesel engine oil with viscosity less than normal so 5w30 oil they are using currently our uh, other manufacturer they are either using 15w30 15w40 but they have gone to 50 5w30 so which means a thinner oil okay but they are saying that after 20000 km we have to change the oil is that recommended no but is that a synthetic oil synthetic oil uh, in synthetic that's synthetic that's possible but in normal mineral oil you do not exceed uh, 10000 you need to replace uh, after every 10000 so this low viscosity meaning mean uh, low friction so better fuel consumption we will achieve with this uh, this oil the common rail system is 1600 bar and it is cu coupled with solenoid injectors and finely controlled injection timing the combustion process is more efficient emission levels they have further uh, optimized using high swirl head port high intake flow and low compression ratio so these these, these engine being a uh, common rail high pressure injection system so they have even used low compression ratio which help in ox reduction another feature uh, for improving fuel consumption they have done is the engine warm up time they have reduced so faster the engine warms up the oil temperature in uh, the water temperature increases or you can say stabilize stabilizes at the required temperature similarly the oil temperature also stabilizes earlier so more is the oil temperature less will be viscosity and low uh, lower will be the friction losses happening in the um, journal bearings or wherever oil film is there so low friction meaning more power available lo uh, low fuel consumption better emission so the warm up time they have reduced so this this they have been able to do by uh, using smaller and lighter water pump and also they have uh, improved the water circuit galleries so that the amount of water in the galleries is minimal so minimal water minimal size water uh, water pump so leading to greater fuel efficiency so as shown on this uh, this uh, graph this 1600 degree uh, 1600 cc engine will warm up faster so it will achieve higher temperature faster resulting into low low oil viscosity and the consequential advantages the next vehicle which we are going to take is the eco sport this is a revolutionary uh, vehicle which was launched by ford uh, maybe Four five years back, and uh, it is having one of the best engines ever made. This engine got uh, consecutive years engine of the year continuously for five 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 six years. So this engine uh, uh, is the Eco Boost engine. The vehicle is available in three engines. The one which we'll be uh, discussing in detail is the Eco Boost engine. It's a one liter engine, one liter engine, uh, petrol engine, dual overhead cam, DI. 
So direct injection, as we see in GDI, we, we referred in earlier presentation. So this is a GDI engine and three I3 inline three cylinder engine. So only one liter. So displacement is 999 cc block and head material caster like the in ID tech uh, amaze engine it was aluminium block but in a, there they are still using caster and the head, cylinder head is aluminium horsepower is 123 horsepower at 6000 rpm being a petrol engine torque is 169 newton meter at 2500 rpm specific output which uh, that is the power available per liter of displacement is 123 very high it's a very contemporary figure bore stroke 71.9 into 82 and compression ratio is 10 is to 1 which is which can be considered a bit higher for a gasoline engine and the fuel consumption is epa environment pollution agency of usa uh, they have their test cycle so city is for 31 mile per ga gallon highway is 43 miles per ga uh, gallon and being made in germany so this are these are the features of this engine now wh what is the philosophy of uh, making this eco boost uh, engine as we discussed earlier, the downsizing. So down, downsizing is the main philosophy of this engine. So this series of engines, they have significant downsizing versus naturally aspirated derivative as a means to enhance fuel economy. Downsizing offers numerous advantages. Lower mass, which results into better performance, reduced real world consumption, improved dynamics, smaller tire, less energy consumed less number of cylinders so lower cost keeps technology accessible for consumer because it's a three cylinder the other competitor vehicles are having four cylinder engines reduced friction due to number of uh, cylinder being less so fewer cylinders less bear number of bearings less lubrication significantly better warm up for both good fuel economy and rapid cabin heating key engineering challenges is to maintain or enhance performance and refinement while delivering the fuel economy advantages of downsizing as customers have shown that they are reluctant to compromise so with the coming of emission norms companies may be working on emission but customer want customer wants the fuel economy also so we cannot sacrifice as the stringent emission norms are coming so we have to keep a uh, reduction target of reduction of fuel consumption as well uh, in this slide are compared the three uh, variant of this vehicle with three three engine the first one is the petrol eco boost engine which we we are going to discuss the Displacement is 999 cc, compression ratio 10 is to 1, maximum power output 92 kilowatt, torque is 170 newton meter, and fuel efficiency 18.9. And if we compare this 1 liter eco boost engine with their normal petrol engine, which is not eco boost, that's a bigger engine, 1.5 liter, 1500 cc, compression ratio 11 is to 1 power is 82 it's 10 kilowatt less than the eco boost though the displacement is 500 cc more so maximum torque is also poor by uh, it is 140 newton meter and the fuel efficiency is only 15.6 against 18.9 of the eco boost so advantage of eco boost are getting reflected in comparison of these two engines smaller engine eco boost even more power better fuel consumption then the third model is available in uh, diesel compression ignition diesel uh, the diesel is also 1.5 liter 1500 cc compression ratio 16 is to 1 and being a diesel because of low rpm only 3750 the power is also 67 kilowatt but 
being diesel and having a turbocharger the torque availability at lower rpm is huge 204 newton meter and diesel being more efficient due to higher compression ratio the fuel efficiency it gives it 22.7 right so petrol eco boost 1.0 liter downside engine power output is more than petrol ti vct 1.0 liter engine and tdci diesel 1.0 5 liter engine so power of eco boost is maximum now we will see how they have done this eco boost technology so the, they are giving a in this eco boost 1.0 liter engine this is a turbocharged engine so turbocharging allows much greater torque and power for smaller engine Downsize, downsize the engine, but due to availability of more air, the uh, power density or the torque and power are higher from the smaller <laughs> engine. Direct injection. So normally you can say 90% of engines in India on the petrol vehicles they are not direct injection, they are MPFI. So here it's a direct injection GDI engine. So GDI improves combustion efficiency. Variable camshaft timing we already discussed on IV Tech. So this feature is also there in EcoBoost engine IV Tech or the VTVT variable camshaft timing are available. So this increases bottom end torque, mid range efficiency and peak power capability. So these three features. So uh, the uh, turbocharging 50% engine size reduction for same power so we seen as compared to 1.5 liter the this engine is giving more so almost a 50 percent reduction in displacement proven reliable cost effective technology matched for low speed response so wherever turbocharger is there the maximum benefit is coming at lower rpm when you are accelerating so turbocharger benefit at low end response is better then the uh, this petrol engine the its direct injection so due to the injection phenomena happening directly over the piston charge cooling for improved efficiency in the cylinder itself when the uh, gasoline is injected due to evaporation the charge cooling will happen so we can have better charge density also higher knock limit more torque at lower rpm due to this cooling effect the knocking tendency in this in engine is uh, lower and the direct injection en en enables sca scavenging action also right because fuel we are injecting at the right time fuel is not there when the charge is coming so we can do the timing and the turbocharging play with the pressures in the intake and exhaust so that scavenging can happen better in this engine and then the twin uh, VCT excuse me sir yes please yes please sir is scavenging and can you please speak uh, in the, because this is a direct injection sir scavenging injection Yeah, let me let me say because this is a direct injection a direct injection engine in a normal MPFI engine we inject the fuel also and the fuel air mixture is coming into cylinder right and during scavenging some of the already prepared fuel or air mixture can get lost but in GDI since only air is coming in the intake manifold so we can do the scavenging scavenging meaning uh, we can throw the exhaust out because only air is coming we are not losing any fuel so this is the advantage of this direct injection that better scavenging is possible and no loss of fuel happens so uh, am i able to answer you yes sir okay okay Okay. 
now uh, they they are using a very special uh, turbocharger in this eco boost engine because the focus uh, focus uh, in any engine and and also on this engine has been to improve the torque figures particularly at low engine speeds so torque at 1500 rpm and time for torque to increase to maximum output are key metrics so from low idling to 1500 rpm is the you can say where we have to accelerate so turbocharger so uh, should pay, pick pick up as early as possible right achieved by utilizing very small low inertia turbocharger capable of running at very high speeds up to 2.5 lakh rpm also so very optimized uh, turbocharger very small with very uh, small turbine Uh, size so that inertia is less and the turbo lag is minimal so they are using a very compact small turbocharger so the lag is minimum uh, low inertia turbo greatly reduce lag in response when throttle is opened from low rpm a traditional problem with turbocharger engine the traditional problem in turbocharger engine was the turbo lag so you you are when you are starting uh, uh, accelerating you want to accelerate you would press the accelerator but there is some milliseconds gap is there before the actual pickup starts so that phenomena was coming due to the turbo lag effect so they have optimized the inertia of turbine and compressor so that minimal turbo uh, turbo lag is happening so direct injection uh, defined fuel is injected directly into combustion chamber via high pressure solenoid injector with six holes so you can see that uh, in the picture shown the injector is injecting directly into the combustion space this is with the multi hole six hole injector and the injection pressures are to the tune of 150 bar when you compare with the mpfi where the uh, injection pressures are hardly 5 to 10 bar so this is you can say high injection pressure system so more the pressure better is the atom atom atomization and multiple injections are also possible like we have common rail crdi engine diesel so multiple injections are also possible in this uh, direct injection eco boost engine evaporation of fuel in cylinder cools mixture before combustion reducing tendency to knock because we are injecting directly into the combustion chamber evaporation cools down the charge so the knocking tendency will decrease allows higher compression compression ratio than normal for turbo engine improving part load fuel efficiency so we are using high compression ratio because knock is not happening due to the evaporation of fuel so we are having up to 10 is to 1 compression ratio which is higher considering a gasoline engine eliminates transfer of fuel mixture from inlet to exhaust during valve overlap because of direct injection improving fuel consumption and reducing exhaust emissions right now uh, this is the variable valve time timing we already studied so if you see in this picture there is a centrifugal arrangement uh, here which will vary the valve overlap and va valve timing on this engine so uh, variable cam timing on both intake and exhaust allows great flexibility to optimize engine efficiency under all condition moderate overlap at full load to improve breathing and out and output with reduced boost level low overlap at idle because at idle otherwise some missing will start happening to take care of that overlap is kept minimal late exhaust valve opening at part load for fuel efficiency greatest benefit is for low speed torque and responsiveness where valve overlap can be increased to allow scavenging action so how this uh, technologies are happening but uh, on this scavenging part also we have already discussed with this also but again i cover at low engine speed and high load during the valve overlap period it is possible for the intake manifold pressure 
to exceed the instantaneous exhaust back pressure because we have a turbocharger here so the intake pressure which usually in the engine is less than exhaust we can make the intake pressure in the intake manifold more than the exhaust so this will help in better squenching under these circumstances squenched air will flow directly into intake uh, from the intake into the exhaust so from intake only because air is coming so all the residual mass fraction available uh, from the previous uh, burn cycle can be thrown out so resulting into better fresh air charge filling scavenging flushes residual gases from cylinder increasing mass of following charge and cooling gas to reduce tendency to knock it also increases the turbo mass flow helping spool up turbo now uh, in a graphical form what are the benefit of um, uh, this uh, turbocharger or scavenging on the performance this we can see on the rpm versus torque uh, graph here here three three uh, graphs are shown the green one is zero scavenging stoichiometric exhaust air fuel ratio so the available torque is with the uh, green green uh, line and steady state scavenging stoichiometric combustion air, air fuel ratio so this is the due to scavenging we are able to increase torque from green to red one is the steady steady state scavenging but since this engine is also having a uh, turbocharger the transient turbo spool up which can result into as i told you the intake pr pressure in the intake pressure going much more than the exhaust resulting in better scavenging so the further benefit is that the available torque can be achieved of this blue curve so 30 new newton meter benefit at 1250 rpm so that are the advantages that uh, being shown on this graph that particularly in the low rpm band because this engine is rated at 6000 rpm but in uh, rpm up to you can say 1500 which is the uh, zone you will the engine will be going through when you are accelerating from uh, 0 to 40 50 so in that you can say there is a 30 newton meter benefit at 1250 rpm so this is the uh, performance improvement by the by this turbocharged spool up and the natural scavenging happening in this engine clear now if we see the uh, engine torque in the complete rpm band range up to the rated rpm the diesel engine in the red curve is giving low power because rpm is less and uh, due to better charge density happening in uh, diesel engine due to bigger turbo turbocharger so the torque available at lower rpm is much more higher in uh, diesel engine and if we compare both the petrol engine 1.6 liter petrol and 1 liter eco boost engine then we see that eco uh, eco boost smaller engine is giving better uh, power or or better torque throughout the range now uh, again we are interested in rpm below you can say 2000 rpm in this range so in this range also if we see the diesel engine is giving better torque number 2 is the eco boost engine then is the 1.5 or 1.6 liter petrol engine now what is the going to be benefit because uh, performance of this 1 liter eco boost engine is said to be even better than the diesel though that diesel engine torque shown on this figure is uh, better for this we need to see the next slide if we see uh, the tra uh, translating the engine power or engine torque into wheel torque through the transmission ratios we have adopted so again in this in the speed uh, this graph is vehicle speed versus wheel torque the torque available on the tire or the wheel right because 
ultimately vehicle has to perform what is the torque available on the wheel after the torque has been increased through the transmission ratios so uh, what we find is that the 1.0 liter eco boost engine the torque on the wheel even it becomes more than the diesel engine for speeds up to 80 uh, km per hour so this is the region where the vehicle will be accelerating so even the 1.0 liter 1.0 liter eco boost engine the wheel torque is better than the diesel engine itself so the drivability will be at par or better than diesel the other uh, other uh, petrol engine is nowhere so this is the don't <laughs> Yes, please. Your question is not clear. Hello. I'm not able to hear you. Can you repeat again? Hello, hello. Sir, downsizing philosophy is adopted in petrol version of eco boost. I'm sorry. Can you keep your mic a little away from your face? Little sir, away. Too low, too low. Ah. Uh, sir, I'm repeating. Uh, downsizing philosophy of uh, petrol version eco boost is implemented. Yeah, I get it. Sir, downsizing philosophy is implemented in petrol version, so can we implement in diesel version? I'm sorry, we are not able to hear you. <laughs> 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 Hello. Yes, please. Sir, are you getting my message? Hello. Please continue. Ah, sir. Downsizing philosophy is adopted in petrol version. So, can we implement this philosophy in diesel version? Ah, uh, please repeat again. Sir. Uh, Downsizing philosophy is adopted in petrol version of Eco Sport. So that can we implement this philosophy in diesel version? Which philosophy are you? So downsizing. Downsizing. Okay, okay. Yeah. No, no. Down downsizing is be being used in both diesel as well as petrol. So as I uh, gave you uh, example of Tata Sumo, Tata Sumo was a three liter uh, engine. Now in their Latest models; they are using only 2.2 liter diesel engine. Similarly, if I recall, uh, even this XUV or Mahindra was having a 2.5 liter engine or 2.6 liter engine. The, when they launched Scorpio, now they are having a 2.2 liter. So, this downsizing is helping in both the diesel as well as uh, petrol engine. Even it's been heard that car has been going into 1500 cc. Fifteen hundred cc. Fifteen hundred cc engine of car. Oh, there is another another factor for this fifteen hundred cc because there is a eight percent reduction in excise if the vehicle is compact, meaning below four uh, the length is below four meter and the displacement is below fifteen hundred cc. So maybe other reason can be that for thar. But it can be possible for offloading too. No, it depends. Uh, no excise body. But thar lengthwise it's below uh, below four four meters. Lengthwise that's okay, but they go performance of a vehicle these days with the kind of turbo charging and these things available. It it is depending on the calibration. 
the engine size is now you can say the engine size has a role to play but other role is also of the turbocharging what kind of turbocharger you are using so uh, maybe a downsized engine with the better optimized turbocharger can also deliver power we have seen this in case of eco boost so it can be both both the factor you are saying okay now we we can see uh, what are the modification uh, have been done by tata in the just uh, just vehicle after the moved from indica and indico platform now uh, they have introduced uh, two new platform engines on this just so the uh, one is the petrol revotron uh, engine 1.2 liter and the features of this revotron engine is a petrol turbocharged mpfi capacity is 1193 cc four cylinder engine and bs4 emission compliant the maximum power available is 90 at 5000 rpm torque is 140 newton meter transmission is manual five speed and the curve weight 1115 to 1135 if you compare your question that uh, honda is very not a safe vehicle the weight of a honda sedan is 100 kg less than this so this is is not even a this is a hatchback so that you have to sacrifice something somewhere so curve weight is much more higher in this smaller vehicle and uh, the diesel engine is quadra jet 90 ps 90 hp you can say and uh, uh, it's a turbo charge with a vjt turbo turbo vjt we will uh, discuss uh, uh, in this presentation and this is 1248 cc four cylinder bs4 90 hp and the torque being as i told you earlier diesel and turbo charge much much higher transmission uh, manual five speed and amt five speed and weight is being diesel little higher than the petrol engine now what is this revotron 1.2 uh, engine t is for turbo this this engine you can say somewhat similar to eco boost that it's having a turbocharger in petrol but this remains a mpfi engine while eco boost was a gdi so they have done uh, improvement they are putting a turbocharger but it's it still remains a mpfi so the turbocharger with mpfi improves the performance of petrol engine by providing high torque higher torque and bhp even at lower rpm and increases the fuel efficiency by 20 to 25% by better burning due to increased mass flow of air borne gasoline in the cylinder the combustion forces the piston down at higher speed increasing torque a turbocharger can decrease the engine specific fuel consumption by as much as 14% this is a subjective figure so uh, if we see in the uh, picture here the injector is injecting fuel in the port port area intake port area it's not injecting direct in the combustion chamber that like we were doing in eco boost similarly another picture sh uh, shows this mpfi in more detail that charge air is coming entering through the air filter and this is the intake manifold the valves are shown here and the uh, rail of this mpfi is currently injecting fuel in this uh, port area of this valve which is which have just opened right so the timing timing of injection can be synchronized with the valve opening based upon the inputs to ecu so like there will be number of sensors engine speed sensor flywheel position sensor vehicle speed sensor atmospheric pressure sensor so based upon all the inputs 
at the right time in the right quantity the quantity of fuel will be injected so this we have already seen but again increased volumetric efficiency due to which fuel efficiency also improves to 20% and reducing the fuel consumption increased performance of the engine higher bhp and torque can be achieved even in engine with small displacement at low rpm reduce co2 fuel consumption is reducing so co2 is also reducing by 20% better utilization and less wastages of fuel as mpfi supply the correct amount of fuel on different speed and load conditions as required so we can play with the quantity and timing of the fuel injection with mpfi additionally uh, uh, they they are giving different modes for for this vehicle there is a sport mo mode there is a eco mode there is a city mode so in different modes when we select what happen the calibration of through the ecu changes if they it's a uh, sport mode the fuel injection will be liberal the pickup will be liberal right so depending upon what mode we uh, want the that uh, typical calibration map will be used for driving the mpfi system or turbocharger uh, calibrations now we see in the uh, petrol engine the uh, the diesel engine this uh, in this vehicle is a quadra jet 1.3 small displacement turbocharged engine 90 hp and 2 uh, 200 newton meter it's a common rail uh, diesel engine diesel injection crdi and with the vgt so what wherever we are seeing we are now having a vgt turbo vgt stands for variable geometric turbocharger and a new transmission is also available with this engine in tata just called automated manual transmission amt for convenience of changing gear as per driver requirement amt we will see ha uske pehle hum vj vgt dekh le vgt mein kya hai as i as i told you in the earlier generation turbocharger turbo lag was a major problem so turbo lag is that engine is not or the vehicle is not uh, accelerating as desired by the driver there is some millisecond gap happening when the driver presses the accelerator and actual vehicle picks up so that happens because the exhaust energy available in the exhaust system will make the turbocharger kick so when the driver driver presses the accelerator there is a time that energy spool up from the combustion chamber it increases the uh, rpm of the uh, turbine so that gap is the turbo lag so to overcome the, that turbo lag is vjt vgt turbocharger came so uh, variable geometry turbocharger now turbocharger uh, functioning we have to see at two rpm range one is the rp rpm range when the vehicle we have to pick up from a red light stop or we have to after after a stop right and the second condition is when it has achieved the top speed maybe 120 130 kmph right so turbocharger we have to optimize for these two condition in the earlier fixed geometry turbocharger this feature was not available now through vgt we can optimize the turbo turbocharger working for both the speed range so that we have a uh, minimal turbocharger lag also and the turbocharger is safe to operate even at higher rpm so that its rpm should not increase so much that it damages turbocharger itself so that is why this vgt came now uh, the the two conditions are shown here on the left side is the low speed condition when the rpm is low at that that time we want turbocharger to spool up very fast so that the pickup increases very quickly so uh, in this figure are shown that the the turbine vanes right they they are in such a position they, that the area available is minimal between the two uh, two turbine vanes right so now the area is minimal so velocity will increase 
so the more energy will spool up the turbo faster this is the low speed or the accelerating phase now in the right size already we have reached the higher rpm the vehicle is running at 120 130 speed right it's cruising now through the ecu the turbocharger the turbine vanes will open up so the turbine vanes will open up and here you see the turbine vanes have opened up the exhaust coming through these uh, shown by red arrows the area it is passing through larger area so velocity will decrease and the turbo spool up will stop so then it will be cruising no further energy will make it run at fire further higher rpm so this is the uh, vjt principle and this is another slide which show this if you see on the right hand side the vanes are in such a orientation that the area available for this pink uh, aero exhaust uh, coming into is minimal so less area more velocity and more will be impact on the turbine blade so which will start to pick up faster when the engine has already revved up on the left side if you see the vanes have opened up so the area available through which the exhaust is entering into turbine is more velocity will decrease and the further impact of energy transfer will reduce and the turbocharger speed will not further pick up right so vjt principle is clear so all the inputs to this when the vane will uh, area will increase decrease will be coming through ecu through various sensor so sensors can be engine rpm inlet manifold pressure the throttle position given by driver right so through all the uh, inputs through ecu the vane aperture area available through vane will be decreased or increased so that at low rpm turbo lag is minimal and at higher rpm when the vehicle is cruising there is no further build up of uh, turbocharger energy so benefits of variable geometry turbocharger good transient response pickup is better improved fuel economy increased useful engine operating speed range enhanced compression brake capability vjts have a minimal amount of lag have a low boost threshold reduced engine swept volume and package size for a given rating this is this relates to the downsizing helps control egr to meet emission regulations so with the position of vanes we can also play with the back pressure and the inlet manifold pressures so that the egr flow we can also play with for controlling the effect on nox reduction sir lag kaise control kar raha hai lag kaise control kar raha hai lag kaise control kar raha hai दोबारा आपको एक्सप्लेन करता हूँ हाँ देखो लो जब लो इंजन आरपीएम है तभी आपको पिकअप चाहिए लैग उसी वक्त होगा तो ये क्या कर रहा है यदि आप देखोगे जो वेन्स है ना वेन्स इस टाइम क्लोज हो गए हैं ये देखो इसके बीच में गैप कम हो गया ना दो वेन के बीच में एरिया कम हो गया तो वो उसको क्या इंजन को तो बताएगा ही ना कोई भी अभी एक्सलेट देना या इंजन आरपीएम कम है कम नहीं होगा वो कम किया गया है थ्रू दी वेरियस सेंसर एरिया कम कर दिया है सो so दैट जब एग्जॉस्ट एंटर करेगा उसकी वेलोसिटी कम्स हायर राइट सो व्हेन वेलोसिटी भी मोर एनर्जी ज्यादा आ, आ जाएगा सो दैट मोर एनर्जी इज ट्रांसमिटेड टू दी टर्बाइन टर्बाइन इज इन साइड टर्बाइन वे यहां पर है ना so more energy due to higher velocity will hit on the turbine vanes and to usme se control kar sakte hain jab starting kar rahe hain pehle wali no but aapne vanes close kar diya now you see the other other situation when it has already now it has achieved the peak right we reach 120 kmbh say now we do not further want to spool up if it has it had fixed vanes as you said what we targeted lower rpm then the rpm of the turbocharger will keep on increasing and resulting in mechanical damage of the turbocharger no problem short term ha to humne 
लोअर आरपीएम पे पिकअप जल्दी ले लिया और हायर आरपीएम पे उसको कंट्रोल भी कर लिया सो दैट दी आरपीएम डज नॉट कीप ऑन इंक्रीजिंग ठीक है और प्लेइंग विद दिस एरिया अवेलेबल यू कैन प्ले विद दी एग्जॉस्ट बैक प्रेशर अवेलेबल एग्जॉस्ट मैनिफोल्ड एंड इनटेक मैनिफोल्ड प्रेशर सो दैट यू कैन प्ले विद दी स्कैवेंजिंग हमने पहले बात की है और इजियर फ्लो ऑल्सो इज नाउ इन अवर हैंड वी कैन प्ले हाउ मच इजियर वी वॉन्ट टू गिव अ डिफरेंट पार्ट रोड कंडीशन और डिफरेंट आरपीएम कंडीशन मुझे आपने देखा होगा जो पंद्रह साल पहले की डीजल गाड़ियां थी ना दे वर वेरी स्लगिश अम्बेसिडर में आपने देखा होगा लोगों ने इस इशू इंजन तो लगाया बट वो गाड़ी चलते चलते ही चलती ही नहीं थी कह लो तो डीजल इंजन बड़ी पीछे थे पेट्रोल से तो वो डीजल इंजन हाउ इट मैच दी परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ पेट्रोल टर्बो चार्जर से ही हुआ है एक तो कॉमन रेल है ठीक है कॉमन रेल ने क्या किया नॉइज रिडक्शन में हेल्प किया कमीशन तो चलो है ही है बट परफॉर्मेंस देखें हम तो टर्बो चार्जर ने पिकअप टॉर्क अवेलेबल पावर अवेलेबल इंप्रूव कर दिया टर्बो चार्जर ने और डीजल इंजन में जो फिर नॉइज आती थी दो ही कमियां थी नॉइज कम करने के लिए कॉमन रेल कॉमन रेल में मल्टीपल इंजेक्शन है तो वो मल्टीपल इंजेक्शन से प्री प्री इंजेक्शन करके उन्होंने उसका जो रेट ऑफ प्रेशर राइज है सिलेंडर का वो कम कर लिया जिससे कि नॉइज कम होगी तो डीजल इंजन में तो बहुत सारे प्रॉब्लम है एफओएस ज्यादा रखना पड़ेगा हां जी पेट्रोल सेफ्टी ज्यादा रखनी पड़ेगी क्योंकि प्रेशर ज्यादा है वेट हाइड्रेशन करना पड़ेगा करना पड़ेगा बट आज मैं आपको कह रहा हूं आजकल का डीजल इंजन में आप बैठ जाओ बढ़िया कारों में आपको पता नहीं चलेगा कि ये डीजल है अगर उतनी ही रन तो पेट्रोल की बनाएंगे तो 100 200 केजी वेट कम हो जाएगा गाड़ी का होएगा होएगा वो हमने एग्जांपल देखा ही था जस्ट का ही पेट्रोल हल्का है डीजल हैवी है बट आपको एडवांटेज भी मिल रहा है ना लो ग्रेड फ्यूल कह लो या कहो कि इकोनॉमिक्स ज्यादा अच्छी है इसकी कंप्रेशन रेशियो ज्यादा है कंप्रेशन रेशियो के कारण भी अच्छा है कि वो यहां पर बीटा के हिसाब से मिल रहा है केजी के हिसाब से मुझे बेटर हो जाएगा नहीं डेंसिटी का डेंसिटी तो इसकी ज्यादा है ना पेट्रोल की है पॉइंट सेवन थ्री इसकी है पॉइंट एट थ्री एक तो वो एडवांटेज मिल गया हमें उससे हमें टेन टू फिफ्टीन परसेंट मिल गया और फिर दूसरा क्या कि हैवी सस्ता ये ठीक है ना हैवी नहीं आप एक फैक्टर देख रहे हो आप कंप्रेशन रेशियो वाला फैक्टर भूल रहे हो ना जो इसके बेनिफिट हैं दो तरह से आ रहे हैं ना एक तो पेट्रोल जैसे आप कह रहे हो है ही सस्ता राइट डेंसिटी भी उसकी डीजल की ज्यादा है इसलिए पर लीटर लेते हो केजी में वो ज्यादा मिल जाता है तो किलो कैलोरी पर केजी ज्यादा मिल गए सेम यदि देखो यदि सेम प्राइस होता है ना ये दो फैक्टर हो गए तीसरा फैक्टर है जो कि इसकी थर्मल एफिशियंसी ही ज्यादा है डीजल इंजन की थर्मल एफिशियंसी ही ज्यादा है राइट वो दो कारणों से ज्यादा है एक तो कंप्रेशन रेशियो ज्यादा है ठीक है और ये एयर फ्यूल रेशियो मेरे से कोई बात कर रहा था एयर फ्यूल रेशियो ये ट्वेंटी के ऊपर चलता है तो देर इज एबंडेंस ऑफ एयर एंड डीजल इंजन जितनी ज्यादा एयर होएगी उतना कंबस्टन अच्छा होएगा ठीक है ना तो इसीलिए जो हमने वो ए के शुरू में फिगर देखे थे वो डीजल की गाड़ी की ट्वेंटी भी है ठीक है ना होंडा के देखें 26 सिक्स की एम पी एल दे रही है पेट्रोल की 18 ही दे रही है है नहीं तो वो सब आ जाएंगे तो पर वो जो फैक्टर है वो तो आपको कंप्रेशन रेशियो से आ रहा है ना रेट की चीज तो और, और सस्ती हो जाएगी ये रेट वाला फैक्टर लगा लेंगे ये वैसे ही पचास रुपए लीटर है वो सत्तर रुपए लीटर है है ना ठीक है तो रेवोल्यूशनरी काम जो डीजल में हुआ है ये हुआ ही कॉमन रेल आने के बाद और टर्बो चार्जर आने के बाद पहले टर्बो चार्जर आया उसके बाद ये कॉमन रेल आ गया अभी हम कुछ फीचर ये सिलेरियो गाड़ी लॉन्च हुई ना 
उसके सिर्फ ए वाले फीचर हम देख लेते हैं ऑटोमेटेड मैनुअल ट्रांसमिशन राइट हमने अभी पढ़ा जो नॉर्मल गाड़ियों में मैनुअल ट्रांसमिशन होता है राइट right? अब फिर उसके बाद हमने सुना है कि ऑटोमेटिक ट्रांसमिशन भी होता है सीवीटी भी होता है बट ऑटोमेटिक ट्रांसमिशन एंड सीवीटी दे आर एक्सपेंसिव तो ये सिलेरियो गाड़ी में एंड इवन टाटा की भी गाड़ी में एम दे दिया उन्होंने ए में गेयर बॉक्स सेम है उसके जो ऑपरेशन है कि गियर शिफ्ट करके फला फॉर्क से फला गेयर डलेगा वो अंदर उन्होंने इलेक्ट्रो हाइड्रोलिकली या सॉलिड एंड मोटर से ऑपरेट कर दी तो आदमी को क्लच दबाने की जरूरत नहीं है गियर शिफ्ट रॉड दबाने से चेंज करने की जरूरत नहीं है वो अंदर उन्होंने ऑटोमेटिक हाइड्रोलिक सिस्टम से या इलेक्ट्रिकल सिस्टम से कर दी राइट तो ए यही है कि गेयर बॉक्स रिमेन सेम ओनली दी क्लच ऑपरेशन एंड शिफ्टिंग बाय हैंड हैज बिन टेकन ड्राइवर हैज नॉट हैव नॉट टू डू इट वो अपने आप ही होएगा तो उसको जो ट्रांसमिशन कंट्रोल यूनिट जैसे ईसीयू इंजन में लगाता है ऐसे टीसीयू लगा है ट्रांसमिशन कंट्रोल यूनिट उसको सेंसर सेंसर फीडबैक देंगे कि ड्राइवर की डिमांड ये है इंजन के आर ये है गाड़ी के आर ये है तो वो अपने आप ही वो गेयर सेलेक्ट कर लेगी राइट ड्राइवर को सिर्फ एक्सीटरी दबाने का तो दिस इज दी एम टी ऑटोमेटेड मैनुअल ट्रांसमिशन तो आप देखोगे इसमें ये पिक्चर लिया हुआ है सिलेरियो का यदि रिवर्स करना है तो आपको आर में गाड़ी करने का नॉब को और ड्राइविंग में आपको डी डी कर देना है उसके बाद एक्सीटर से ही वो गियर सिलेक्शन अपने आप ही होगी आपको क्लच वगैरह कुछ दबाने का नहीं है उसमें जरूरत नहीं है ठीक है जी सो दिस यू कैन से दिस इज लाइक लाइक एन ऑटोमेटिक बट ए कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव सोल्यूशन ऑटोमेटिक विल बी एक्सपेंसिव अच्छा जी ए एम टी सस्ता है अच्छा ठीक है ओके तो वट आर द एडवांटेजेस ऑफ ए एम टी फ्रीडम फ्रॉम ऑपरेटिंग द क्लच लीवर वेरी कंफर्टेबल टू स्टॉप एंड इन स्टॉप एंड गो ट्रैफिक बेटर माइलेज देन ऑटोमेटिक ट्रांसमिशन लोअर कॉस्ट देन ऑटोमेटिक ट्रांसमिशन बट लिटल एक्सपेंसिव देन मैनुअल क्योंकि इतने कंट्रोल uh, लगे हैं सेंसर लगे हैं कोई सॉलिनॉइड लगा है कोई हाइड्रोलिक सिस्टम लगा है लिटल एक्सपेंसिव और जो मेजर मैन्युफैक्चर हैं इसके जेड एफ इंडिया में ये मैग्नेटी मरेली के सारे लगे हुए हैं दे आर बींग मैनुफैक्चर इन इंडिया ये डिटेल में ना दिस विल बी कवर टू टूमोरो बाई मिस्टर मनिंदर इसको मैं स्किप कर रहा हूँ और ये सिर्फ ये आप देख लीजिए कि ये डिफरेंट लीवर लगे हुए हैं उसको ऑपरेट कर, करते हैं ये ठीक है ना ये ये मोटर एक्स रेल मोटर सेंसर लगा है या वाई रेल मोटर सेंसर लगा है क्लच मोटर लगा है क्लच को दबाने के लिए सो ऑल ऑपरेशन डन बाय मोटर्स दिस विल आल्सो बी कवर टुमारो जस्ट टाटा टियागो में क्या किया हमने जेस्ट में देखा फोर सिलेंडर इंजन है रेवोट्रॉन है रेवोटॉर दो था इसमें उन्होंने तीन सिलेंडर कर दिया प्राइस कम कर दी है राइट टेक्नोलॉजी रिमेन सेम बट इट इज बिकमिंग ए वेरी पॉपुलर वहीकल और इसके अलावा इन्होंने एबीएस दिया है इलेक्ट्रिक इलेक्ट्रॉनिक ब्रेक फोर्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है रियर पार्किंग सेंसर इंजन में बोला ड्यूल टोन इंटीरियर्स सुजुकी इग्निस देखें तो दिस दिस यूज द सेम स्विफ्ट इंजन इसका जो यूनिक फीचर आप देखोगे इसमें तो सब वही है हाँ एक ये डीआरएल इसमें दिया है इन्होंने डे टाइम रनिंग लाइट डी आर एल दिया ड्यूल टोन रूफ दिया इन्होंने तो दिस इज दी आर एल लाइट दिखाया प्रोजेक्टर लैम्प है फॉर बेटर फोकस ड्यूल टोन रूफ दिया इन्होंने फॉर अट्रैक्टिव लुक्स 
और इसको इंफोटेनमेंट सिस्टम एप्पल ड्रीवन या एंड्रॉयड ड्रीवन दोनों सिस्टम दिए हुए हैं इन्होंने और एक जो इनका फीचर आगे आने वाला वो है कि टू अवॉइड कुलूजन इसके आगे कैमरे लगे होंगे वो कैमरे आगे कोई सिचुएशन बनता है कोई आगे कार आ जाती है या कुछ और है कुछ भी तो वो ऑटोमेटिक ब्रेकिंग का या वार्निंग का सिस्टम भी दे विल इंट्रोड्यूस सो दिस इज ए कुलूजन मिटिगेटिंग ब्रेक सिस्टम विल ऑल्सो कम ड्यूल फ्रंट बैग्स ए बी एस आई थिंक यू एवरी वन नो तो ए बी एस में मेन वो क्या करता है कि ये यदि सिस्टम देखें जैसे चार व्हील है हमारे उन चारों व्हीलों पर आरपीएम सेंसर लगा है राइट वो आरपीएम सेंसर का इनपुट ई सी यू को जा रहा है यदि कोई व्हील स्लिप करने लगेगा लॉक या लॉक होएगा राइट तो वो उस उसको उसकी ब्रेक को फ्री कर देगा जो चार ब्रे, ब्रेक का प्रेशर आया हुआ है वो उसको लूज कर देगा ताकि वहीकल स्लिप ना हो एंटी लॉक ब्रेकिंग सिस्टम ए बी एस विद ई बी डी थोड़ा इंटरेस्टिंग uh, है सो ए बी एस एंटी लॉक ब्रेकिंग सिस्टम ई बी डी इज इलेक्ट्रॉनिक ब्रेक फोर्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन राइट तो इसमें क्या करेगा वो ये आप एग्जाम्पल राइट right वाला देख लीजिए जैसे कि दिस कार इज ड्रिवन विद ए सिंगल ड्राइवर तो जो वेट है ड्राइवर का आगे या पीछे तो कोई बैठा नहीं है राइट right? अब दूसरी सिचुएशन में ड्राइवर इज ऑल्सो देयर पैसेंजर ऑल्सो देयर राइट तो वेट पीछे भी आ गया तो नॉर्मल गाड़ी में जो ब्रेकिंग uh, डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है क्योंकि इंजन यूजली आगे होता है 70 परसेंट थर्टी परसेंट है ब्रेकिंग का पर जैसे ही वो सेंस करेगा कि पिछले व्हील पे भी पैसेंजर आर देयर तो वो सिक्सटी फोर्टी कर देगा तो पीछे की ब्रेक को मोर इफेक्टिव कर देगा ताकि स्टॉपिंग डिस्टेंस कम हो जाए राइट सो दिस इज ब्रेक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फंक्शन उसमें के लिए तो बहुत अच्छा है उसके लिए तो बहुत अच्छा है बट इतने एक्सपेंसिव सिस्टम गुड्स वाली गाड़ी में अभी नहीं आए हैं हाँ जी हाँ ठीक है जी क्लियर ये आईसो फिक्स चाइल्ड सीट के लिए उन्होंने फिक्सचर दिया आप चाइल्ड सीट फिक्स कर सकते हो इग्निस में अब इसमें इसकी जो बॉडी भी है ये भी हम कल डिस्कस करेंगे कल टोटल इफेक्टिव कंट्रोल टेक्नोलॉजी जो बॉडी का स्ट्रक्चर बनाया दे हैव यूज्ड हाई स्ट्रेंथ अलॉयज सो दैट कम वेट में कम शीट थिकनेस में एनर्जी एब्जॉर्ब हो जाए कोलेप्सिबल स्ट्रक्चर है ताकि एनर्जी एब्जॉर्ब कर ले ड्राइवर को या पैसेंजर को उतना इम्पैक्ट ना आए वी विल सी दिस टमोरो की वट आर दीज अल्ट्रा हाई स्ट्रेंथ और हाई स्ट्रेंथ स्टील ये भी कल देखेंगे रियर पार्किंग सेंसर आई थिंक नोन इसमें थोड़ा बस ये कवर कर लेते हैं हम जो सियाज में आप बात कर रहे थे ना सेमी हाइब्रिड सिस्टम जो है हमारा तो इफ वी सी दूल कंजम्पन ऑफ सियाज पेट्रोल ऑटोमेटिक 19 सियाज पेट्रोल मैनुअल लिटिल बेटर डीजल 24 नॉर्मल डीजल बट देन इज सियाज डीजल हाइब्रिड द फ्यूल कंजम्पन इज ट्वेंटी so you can say 20 to 30 percent better, uh, 10 to 20 percent better. now how they are doing this? so this is SHVS, smart hybrid vehicle system. what are the additional uh, in this smart or mini hybrid system they have put? so they have put an integrated starter generator. in the normal engine there is an alternator and there is a starter. but in this case there is only one unit, ISG. वही गाड़ी को स्टार्ट भी करता है और वही बैटरी की चार्जिंग में भी यूज होता है सो इट्स अ इंटीग्रेटेड सिस्टम आइडल स्टॉप एंड स्टार्ट तो जैसे ही गाड़ी रेड लाइट पे आपने जाके रो, रोकी यदि आपने बंद कर दो तो अच्छा है बट उसको समझ में आ जाएगा कि आपने न्यूट्रल कर दिया है गाड़ी आइडल होगी वो बंद कर देगा जैसे ही आप रेड लाइट से ग्रीन हुआ आपने क्लच दबाया वो अपने आप ही स्टार्ट कर देगा आपको की से स्टार्ट करने की जरूरत नहीं है नो नो आपकी गाड़ी देखो वो, वो को फिगर है कोई दस सेकेंड या पंद्रह सेकेंड का है यदि उससे ज्यादा हो 
यूजली जो आपको रेड लाइट यहाँ मिलेगी ना वो लंबी लंबी मिलती है उसके कारण ओवरऑल उसको बेनिफिट ही मिलेगा देन दी अनदर फीचर दे आर गिविंग दी ब्रेक एनर्जी रीजनरेशन वेन एवर यू आर अप्लाइंग ब्रेक आपने फ्यूल पैडल से हटा लिया ठीक है गाड़ी अभी चल रहा है आपका तो वो उसको ब्रेकिंग के लिए पार्शली एनर्जी विल भी ऑब्जॉर्व बाई दी ब्रेक बाई दी फ्रिक्शन डिस्क पार्शली जो इसका इंटीग्रेटेड स्टार्टर जनरेटर है वो एनर्जी ऑब्जॉर्व करके बैटरी को चार्ज कर देगा सो दैट ब्रेक एनर्जी इज यूज फिर इसमें गेयर शिफ्टर इंडिकेटर है इट विल गाइड यू कि भाई अभी दूसरा गेयर लगाओ अभी तीसरा लगाओ यहाँ इट विल हेल्प यू इन गेयर गेयर सिलेक्शन तो ये जो विद ऑल दीज फंक्शन सयाज हाइब्रिड अंडर फैम मगे गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया की एक स्कीम फैम के अंडर है फास्टर अडोप्शन एंड मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ हाइब्रिड एंड इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल टू में उसमें एक्साइज ड्यूटी में बेनिफिट मिलता आपको 12.5 परसेंट सब्सिडी ऑफ रुपी थर्टीन थाउजेंड अंडर इलेक्ट्रिक एंड हाइब्रिड पॉलिसी टू गेट ए डिस्काउंट वेन यू बाय तो गवर्नमेंट हाइब्रिड पे या इलेक्ट्रिफिकेशन पे इस पॉलिसी के अंडर कर रही है कि वी शुड गो फॉर हाइब्रिडाइजेशन एंड इलेक्ट्रिफिकेशन ऑफ व्हीकल्स टाटा हेक्सा के एक दो फीचर देख लेते हैं जो बड़ी महंगी होगी स्पेशल है इट्स इट्स लेड एसिड ओनली बट इट हैज सम स्पेशल वी डोंट द कॉस्ट विल बी कमिंग देयर ओनली नहीं खैर ओवरऑल कॉस्ट भी दो साल तो नहीं जितने भी चार साल हम बदलते हैं उतने टाइम में ही बदल भी जाएगी बट आप देखो ना आपको डेली चार पांच किलोमीटर का एडवांटेज मिल रहा है एंड एंड ये कॉस्ट तो है ही ना आप इमिशन भी देखो ना फोकस अभी अमीशन पे भी है ना तो सर अगर कब नहीं मैं तो मैंने आपको एग्जाम्पल दिया की मान लो भी दस पंद्रह सेकेंड लाइट रह रही है आप बंद कर दीजिए यदि बीस सेकेंड है तीस सेकेंड आप बंद कर दीजिए यदि आएगी दस सेकेंड ही रह गए फिर बंद करने की जरूरत नहीं नाउ दिस इज ए वेरी कॉर इंजन नाउ दे आर यूजिंग ए टर्म वेरी कॉर और इसकी पावर आप देखोगे वन फिफ्टी फोर तक है जबकि कंपिटिटर जो महिंद्रा एक्सयू वी है दैट्स अराउंड वन फोर्टी एच पी तो हेक्सा की पावर भी अच्छी मिल रही है फ्यूल कंजम्पन इज ऑल्सो गुड ये इंजन के फीचर हैं इसमें एक ब्रेक फिल ब्रेक प्री फिल फीचर हम देख लेते हैं ब्रेक प्री फिल में क्या है कि लाइक जब हम ब्रेक अप्लाई करते हैं यूजुअली तो हम पहले एक बार दबाते हैं फिर छोड़ के फिर दोबारा दबाते हैं ताकि लॉक ना हो जाए राइट तो इसमें ब्रेक प्री फिल में सेंसर लगा हुआ है वो जज कर लेता कि हमने एक बार दबाया अब हम अगली बार दबाने जा, जाने वाले हैं तो जैसे ही हम पैर उठा के दोबारा दबाएंगे उससे पहले वो अपने आप ही उसमें प्रेशर जनरेट कर देता है ताकि स्टॉपिंग डिस्टेंस कम हो जाएगा आपको उतनी जोर से नहीं लगाने पड़ेगी सो दिस ब्रेक प्री फिल फीचर इज देयर एंड इट इज कमिंग दैट इलेक्ट्रॉनिक स्टेबिलिटी कंट्रोल के अंदर ही आता है ईएसपी के सिक्स एयर बैग्स हैं प्लस प्रोजेक्टर हेडलैम्प स्किड प्लेट लगा पीछे ड्यूल एग्जॉस्ट पाइप इज देयर फिर इसमें ड्राइविंग मोड जैसे हमने पहले डिस्कस किया इसमें भी ऑटो मोड है कंफर्ट डायनेमिक रफ रोड मोड है फोर बाय फोर भी है दे कॉल इट ए डब्ल्यू डी ऑल व्हील ड्राइव ऑल व्हील ड्राइव एडिशनली इट हैज हिल होल्ड कंट्रोल एंड हिल डिसेंट कंट्रोल अब जो इसका ट्रैक्शन कंट्रोल भी है कि आपका स्लिपरी रोड है कोई स्नो स्नो वाला है देन ट्रैक्शन कंट्रोल इज और ट्रैक्शन कंट्रोल में करेगा क्या थ्रू ईसीयू एक तो ब्रेक फोर्स अप्लाई टू वन और मोर व्हील बैलेंस करेगा रिडक्शन और सप्रेशन ऑफ स्पार्क सीक्वेंस टू वन और मोर सिलेंडर 
ठीक है ताकि उसकी एनर्जी कम पैदा हो प्रोडक्शन ये डीजल इंजन है तो फ्यूल सप्लाई को से प्ले करेगा क्लोजिंग दी थ्रोटल इफ दहीकल इज फिटेड विद ड्राइव बाय वायर थ्रोटल इन टर्बो चार्ज वहीकल ए बूस्ट कंट्रोल सॉलिड एक्चुअली टू रिड्यूस बूस्ट एंड फॉर इंजन पावर राइट ताकि जो व्हील पे ट्रैक्शन चाहिए ट्रैक्शन उस पर ट्रांसफर हो जाए इंजन इमोबिलाईजर इज वेरी कॉमन जीनॉन एक्स टी जो टाटा ने लॉन्च किया इसमें मैंने आपको बताया ना एल एस डी लिमिटेड स्लिप डिफरेंशियल है हमें पता कि नॉर्मल डिफरेंशियल हमें चाहिए होता है टर्निंग के टाइम जब टर्निंग करें जो अंदर वाला व्हील है उसके आरपीएम कम हो जाए बाहर वाले के बढ़ जाए ठीक है जी तो हमें डिफरेंशियल ये काम करता है बट टिपिकली ऑन अर्थ मूविंग में ट्रैक्टर वगैरह में यदि कई बार ट्रैक्टर फंस जाता है तो एक एक व्हील उसका फंस गया तो दूसरा उससे ज्यादा आरपीएम पे घूमने लग जाता है ड्यू टू डिफरेंशियल एक्शन राइट तो ट्रैक्टर्स में हमने डिफरेंशियल लॉक दिया होता है या हम डिफरेंशियल लॉक लगा देंगे ताकि पावर दोनों व्हील्स पे बराबर आ जाए और वो बाहर निकल जाए राइट तो जीनॉन जी में उन्होंने डिफरेंशियल को लिमिट कर दिया डिफरेंशियल लिमिटेड स्लिप डिफरेंशियल क्योंकि अदरवाइज यदि जिस जहां डिफरेंशियल लॉक नहीं लगाया तो एक तो व्हील रुक गया बाकी एनर्जी दूसरा वो चलता रहे हम स्पीड बढ़ाएंगे उसकी आप ही बढ़ते रहेंगे ये हिलता भी नहीं है तो लिमिटेड स्लिप डिफरेंशियल में वो क्या करता है दोनों का डिफरेंस निकालता है कि जो फंसा हुआ व्हील है और जो फास्ट मूव कर रहा है दोनों का डिफरेंस कितना है जब उसको पता चल जाता है कि अरे डिफरेंस इतना बढ़ रहा है तो उसमें क्लच अरेंजमेंट लगे हुए हैं तो वो दोनों फिर एक तरह डिफरेंशियल लॉक होके दूसरे को भी एनर्जी चला जाएगा ताकि वो फंसा हुआ निकल जाएगा तो जैसे हमारे वेट क्लचेज होते हैं ये अरेंजमेंट आउटपुट शाफ्ट में जो व्हील में है वो लगे हुए हैं और क्लच मैकेनिकल भी लगा लगते हैं विस्कस भी आर अवेलेबल तो ये एल से उन्होंने गाड़ी फंसी ऑफ रोड के लिए जीनॉन में दे है लिमिटेड स्लिप डिफरेंशियल ठीक है जी